<laughs> Up next, a look at Katana, Samurai Action Card Game, a two-player card game of Samurai Dueling. Please note the designer and publisher of Katana provided us with a review copy of this game. No other compensation was provided. All right, Katana was designed and self-published by Tracy Allen. It was originally funded through Kickstarter back in 2019. Uh, this game only plays two people, two people only, no solo mode, no three players. And a single duel between two samurai takes under 30 minutes. Well, we recorded an unboxing video of Katana and that's a great way to check out what you get with this card game. For those of you who haven't had a chance to watch the video, how about a quick summary of what you get? Well, the game itself is in that kind of box you expect mass market card games to come in, like like the box for something like Uno. It's a super tightly packed box with a set of instructions and two piles of cards. Now, in addition to this box, I also received a separate example of play booklet and some tokens from Tracy. Now, from what I understand, this is something you'll get directly if you order directly from Tracy's website, which is katanacardgame.com, all one word, which as far as I can tell is the only way to get the game right now because it's not listed on Amazon or anywhere else. Now they do mention the tokens on the website uh, once you go into the sale portion uh, as an exclusive uh, for the website, but the example of Playbook Mute is actually mentioned anywhere on their website. So no, I don't know. No clue. Now, as for the cards, uh, these are nice, like really nice. These are high end cards. Like if these, like the best decks you can buy from Bicycle, like they, they are playing card quality with that whole plastic linen finish you can see on them. So they don't slide everywhere. And then the graphic design of these cards is fantastic. Like this is just a striking looking game. It is visually striking. And I got to say, I personally think it looks great. Now, my one big complaint with the components is that I got this extra stuff, right? And it's a tightly fitting box. So this extra stuff doesn't fit in the box. So there's nowhere to put this extra book or these tokens. So like at this point, I, I'm thinking like this is gonna go in a quiver or something because it drives me nuts that I can't put it all in one spot. So now that we have an idea of what you get, how does Katana play? All right, so to start, each player is going to get a hand of three random kami. Kami are like Japanese spirits. Not quite gods, not quite demons, like spirits, something like that. They're going to select one of these and put it into play. Um, this is the spirit that's like guiding your samurai or guarding your samurai. Each kami has a bunch of stats, so they have like a kamikaze value that you can use when you sacrifice the kami. They have a health and armor setup, which is a little odd. And then they have two abilities. They, each one has a passive ability and an active ability, and they're all 100% unique. You won't find the same passive ability or an active ability on a different card. So cards are, are filling multiple uses depending on how and when you use them. Yeah, this is true for the, the Kami and the combat cards, which are the ones which are going to be used for attack because your combat cards also have your attack defense and your stance on them. But more about that in a bit. So once you've got your Kami, you then have to set up your health, which sounds kind of weird, but you're putting down heart cards and then armor cards on top of those heart cards based on a pattern that's on your Kami. And each of these is unique again. And what matters is you can only attack the stack that's in the front. So the actual physical position of cards on the table matters. Yes, exactly. For for health and armor. Though I got to say, it does, doesn't seem to have as much impact as you'd expect while playing. Like the, the health pattern is set by your kami, but then the armor you can stack however you like, which is something that, that actually isn't totally obvious in the rules. But you can do some things where you, like, you stack it all in one spot seem to make a difference because it kind of makes like a a roadblock for the other player to get by. So they kind of have to like make a really big attack to get past that part. But other than that, it doesn't seem to have too much. Now, each turn of the game, whoever's turn it is going to draw five cards and they're going to pick one action out of a set of actions. These include activating your Kami. You have to play a Purify card from your hand to do that. Initiating Kamikaze, which is a massive attack, but it burns your Kami. Polluting your opponent's Kami with a Pollute card from your hand just drawing a shrine card or discarding cards to draw new cards, discard as many as you want to draw new cards, but it takes your whole turn or actually attacking. Now those Kami I talked about each earlier, each have two powers, right? The active power can only be used by playing a purify card. They also have a passive power all the time. Now all these powers break the rules in some way. I'm not going to get into how, but there's lots of different ways they break the rules and you can lose these powers. If your Kami becomes polluted, 
The first time your commie is polluted, it loses the active ability. The second time it becomes polluted, you lose the passive ability. And if a commie ever becomes polluted three times, it's actually removed from the game. Now, a player without a kami can get a new one. They just have to discard a Purify card and lose one armor to draw a new kami. And all that pollution can be removed by playing Purify cards on your turn. Now, every time you do Pollute or Purify, you have to draw a Shrine card. And these are an interesting mix of Banes and Boons with the deck weighing slightly towards favorable things. So that is a lot to take in for a game that's only 108 cards. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, it's like, I would say it's less cards than that because so many of the cards are the same, which we'll get to in just a second because the attack cards, of which they're the combat cards, which is the majority of the decks, are only actually four different types. And every one features an attack value, a defense value, and a stance on the bottom. And more about stances in a second. So the attacker is going to play a card saying, I attack with this, with whatever value it is. It's either one, two, or three. And then the defender can play one card in defense, which again is one, two, or three. If the defending player's defense is greater than the attack, the attack's prevented. If it's less, the difference is taken as damage. Damage is applied first to armor and then to health. Well, that's straightforward enough. Big numbers beat small. Armor takes damage before people do. Yep, pretty much. Now, what's interesting is one attack is actually like a series of blows. So after that first play of a card, and if it's defended, the attacker can keep playing cards. And they can just keep attacking, 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 as long as they have cards in their hand. And then the defender is going to try to defend, defend, defend for all the cards they have in their hand. Until either the attacker stops, or a point of damage is actually dealt. Once damage is dealt, the, the series of blows stops. So it's you picture that samurai duel of the, the, the quick exchange of blows and then step back and look at each other again. I thought this was really interesting. And the other thing is if you hit the opponent's health, you've drawn blood. And at that point, the, the combat pauses. And then as a nice thematic touch, the player has to pollute their kami for drawing blood because in feudal Japan, blood was considered to be a polluting element. So the one thing I think we can say about this game is that it is thematic. Now, I don't even begin to sort of be any expert no. on samurai martial history, but the feeling and concepts they're working with just really give you a, an immersive feeling, at least to this old white guy. And I got to say, every interview I have seen with Tracy Allen is he has done his research. Like he, he has, he is basing this on some form of Japanese uh, history and mysticism. I don't know it myself again, but he does seem to have done the research. To me, it definitely has that feel of a, a Kurosawa movie, or at least a, what I think of when I think of samurai culture. Right. Now, instead of playing a combat card to attack, you can also go kamikaze. I mentioned this before. Every kami has a kamikaze value. It's usually huge. It's like six, seven attack. You do it, you make your big attack, and then your kami's burnt and gone. So a truly sacrificial attack. Now, once the player has taken an action, you then get a chance to take one of the cards in your hand and put it face down. This is now your stance for the next round. I said I'd get back to stances. Now, stance cards go off if your opponent attacks you. What's interesting is if they don't, you just burnt that card. It was a waste. But if they do attack you, you're going to flip the stance. There are four different stances. They do different things. Ones give defensive bonuses, another retaliates, and so on. I'm not going to get into the details here. Right, so you're guessing what your opponent will do in advance to try yeah. and minimize their success at whatever it exactly. is. Exactly, yep. So play continues back and forth until one of the players loses their last health heart, causing the other player to win. Pretty simple. Now, what's interesting to note here that may not have been obvious from this description is you only get to draw new cards at the start of your turn. So a big part of the game is trying to decide how to balance the cards you have. You're like how many cards because if you spend you have five cards you spend three to attack that's only going to leave you one for a stance you only got one card left to defend with then because of the standard way of play so that's that's a big part of the game is if you go for that big attack you're probably leaving yourself open but the best thing overall i gotta say the, the best thing about this game is the way it looks like i don't know there's just something striking about this game and every time i share a picture with it online i'm not the only one like i get comments from people like oh what game's that what's that how's that play have you done a review yet like everyone is excited by this game like there's just like i don't know i, I don't know if it's art deco or whatever that style is that look that it only uses four colors like just bang like this game just looks so good yeah and you, you're adding the quality of the art and the overall aesthetic to the actual component quality you mentioned earlier and you've got a really strong offering when you open up that box yeah 
It is. It's really impressive. Now, the other thing I like is what we already basically mentioned is how well the theme is tied into this game. Like you get that feel, you get this samurai who's being guided by a Kami. He's, he's invoking the spirits. There are the way actions are taken, the way you can set up for a big attack. And then that attack being a series of different strikes and counter strikes, either ending with a failed attack or the drawing of blood. Like, like I said, Kurosawa, like I just, I picture those, the, the samurai circling each other, the bang, bang, bang. And then looking at each other again and bang, bang, bang. And then, you know, the, the scene where the guy's from behind, then you see him bleeding. Like, I totally see that while playing this game. And then there's that whole uh, concept of corruption and pollution, which I found really fascinating. Yeah, and what I get is that that, that sense of uh, the concept of mindfulness uh, is what I think of when listening to this talk of the actions and the planning and those short, decisive interactions with an opponent before you break away yeah. and, and reset, um, which is, again, a, a very uh, sort of, uh, theme for, uh, theme for that that whole concept. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, that's it for the roses. I got to say this: th there is a serious problem with this game, though, and that is the rules. Um, in addition to the fact you have a rule book that comes with the game, I also got this added example guide that the designer thought was necessary for learning the game. And I got to say, if I sat down, and if I was the kind of gamer who only played by the rules as written, I probably would have given up. Like, I don't even know if I could have finished a game because every time we sat down to play Katana, something would come up that isn't covered by either of the books. And then with the two books, there were rules that were contradictory between the two. And then things that were only found in one, not the other. So things that were only in the example book that weren't in the rule book and things that I, it literally, I got to say, I'm sorry to say, the game is unplayable as written if you follow the rules in the example book only, if that was your only source of knowledge. And also, this isn't a limited reaction to the game. Numerous content, uh, commenters and reviewers have indicated that they have needed to rely on Tracy to understand the game yeah. uh, in order to, when, you know, the, the Kickstarter, people who received the Kickstarter uh, have indicated that Tracy was really helpful again and again with problems they had with the game and and basically that's saying that they couldn't play the game without his help yeah um and it's great that they're available to do that all the respect in the world to tracy for that but it is also unfortunate that that's required yeah so now i i do have to say if i bought this at target say and i didn't have the bonus book and i brought it home any pair of gamers with any amount of experience of playing games is going to be able to, to play it in some way. You'll be able to muddle through. You'll be able to come up with rulings for various situations that come up that aren't covered by the rules, right? We're all gamers. We've all seen it before. You can interpret it. You're like, oh, do you think this stance means I get a bonus armor now? Or I get both the bonus armor and the plus the defense. You're going to decide, well, one or the other. And one's going to be right. One's going to be wrong. And But you're going to get to play the game. You'll be able to extrapolate what's there. Like, come on, we were able to sit down with our group and we played the He-Man Master of the Universe role-playing game. It is possible, despite the fact the rules aren't as good as they should be. Now, I am pleased to say that the designer, Tracy Allen, has put up an official Katana FAQ on Board Game Geek now. And many of the questions that I contacted him with were put on that post, which is awesome. So he is taking that step to be able to to get that information out there so it, it's it's good that it's getting out there but and, and no the game's not unplayable i just think it's unplayable as written right and it is an excellent design that design the uh, sign that the designer is willing to accept potential issues and take yeah. action to rectify them too often games are released into the wild on their own to flourish or die as you know as the wind may have it now Ignoring the issues with the rule book, uh, having sat down with Tracy, asked questions, figuring out how to play, I would say it's decent. Um, I love the theme. I love the aesthetic. The look of the game is great. There are aspects that work really well, like the, the hand management aspect. Uh, I love that. Do I spend all my cards to attack or do I hold some back to defend? That is a great decision point in a game. But then there's other parts that just felt like they could use more work. Uh, as I already mentioned, the armor health system like seems like it's neat in concept, but it just 
feels like there, there should be a bit more there or something. And then I, pollution just seems a little overpowering. Like if you just get polluted. And um, one of the things that can happen is once you've lost your commie, your opponent can just keep piling pollution on you. And you can't get a new commie until all that's gone. Like things like that, just pollution seems a little overpowered. Like maybe there should be more purified cards than pollution cards. Uh, there's just a few things that, that felt like they could have used a, a little more work. And personally, this is a two-player dueling game. This is one of those games you sit down with a deck of cards and you're competing with the person across from you. And there are a lot of those out there. There are a lot of two-player dueling games. And I own quite a few in my collection. And personally, compared to most of the other games, this just seems very light. And that's due to the lack of variety in the cards. Like when I try to compare this to Star Realms or Sorcerer or Ashes, uh, Rise of the Phoenix Born, like th there's no comparison in a way. Like the card options are severely limited compared to even like a Magic the Gathering, if you think of all the Magic cards. Like there are literally only four different combat cards in this deck. And this is obviously by design. Like this was intended. This isn't trying to compete with Star Realms. But limiting the cards... Uh, it, while it gives you a tighter tactical game, right? You know what's there. You know what's going to come out. You know the possibilities, and you even know the probabilities of those possibilities. It, you're playing a game that's more like chess, right? That that you know the, the different moves your opponent can make. While I like chess, I prefer my card games to feel more like Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Like I want lots of options and variability. So I can see it. I can see some gamers being on either side of the fence. There's going to be people out here who prefer the, the tactical, more tactical games will probably enjoy the limited card set. But personally, I found it not, not limiting, but boring. Right. Simplicity is definitely one of its selling points uh, and part of its theme. Uh, it seems like this could be a real carry with you in play when you've got some time to kill sort of game. Once it gets past the rule hurdles, if you're into that sort of, you know, that tight yep. little tactical game. Now, overall, uh, once we had figured out the correct way to play, uh, Deanna and I had some fun playing with it. It wasn't a terrible experience. This is a decent game. It looks fantastic. Though in the end, I, I just feels like it could use a bit more polish. Like I, it, to me, it felt like this game could have used some rounds of blind play testing. I think that would have surely helped with the rule book as well as fine holding some of the gameplay elements. As for anyone curious about picking this one up, I would suggest checking out the reviews that are out there. I would suggest checking out a few of them. Like obviously you've already listened to ours, but check out what other people had to say. Look at the reviews on board game geek. Um, there are a few video reviews out there where you can see people playing. Uh, in a way, like, see if this looks like the kind of game for you beforehand. But most importantly, if you do pick this up, do take the time to go to Board Game Geek and find that FAQ. It is an absolute must in this case. Well, for a more in-depth look at Katana, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.